Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Normal attitude towards our enemy is that our hatred, revenge and curse. But Jesus proposes the other way. Love instead of hatred, forgiveness instead of revenge, prayer instead of curse. It's difficult but possible, not an easy task, yet we can all achieve it. Jesus has done it from the cross and he wishes his followers to do the same. This may go against human nature, but it's a divine attitude because God loves friends and foes equally. Effects of loving enemies. If we have anger or resentment within us, even if we don't think about it all the time, there will be times when it surfaces and it makes us unhappy. Holding on to the past hurt feeling will only make us bitter, forgiving and letting it go will make us happy. We could change that person's life. We could even make them our friends instead of an enemy. It makes an incredible difference. And if that enemy happens to be a family member or former friend, reuniting can be really amazing and worthwhile. We set a better example for others. It becomes a great testimony of witnessing Christ who did the same. If not, we sow the seeds of enmity which can affect even our children who follow their eldest example. It will be a test of our personality. How good am I if I just have to love my family and friends? That's extremely easy. But a better test of our goodness is if we can overcome the feelings of hatred and resentment and turn them into feelings of love. Let's remember by hating our enemy, we only add up more enmity between us. By loving our enemy, we not only put an end to our enmity, but begin a new friendship. Enemies are not born, but we make them. Destroy the enmity, not the enemy. One day, we all of us have to leave this world. When we live, let us not leave behind unresolved issues, unreconciled relationships and unforgiving persons. When we die, make sure there are friends who will mourn your death and not enemies who will rejoice over it.